All right. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in for Film Frenzy, uh, the unfiltered review on movies of all kinds. I am your film enthusiast, Jay Masai. I'm Uncle Swag, movie buff. Got Uncle Swag, movie buff. And today we are going to review The Machine. <laughs> the Machine. When I was 22, I got involved with the Russian Mafia. I was a frat boy on a class trip. This is Igor. He's here for your protection. He is very dangerous. Ooh. You are not to talk to or hang out with him. All I want to do is hang out with him. I did not speak Russian. Yeah, machine. <laughs> All I knew how to say was, On the machine! It was literally the best summer of my life. We robbing this guy? This is Russia! 23 years after those events, the story continues. What is wrong with this shirt? Yeah, this is a real interesting one right here. The Machine stars. Um, it is directed by Peter Atencio. Uh, screenplay by Kevin Beagle and Scotty Landis. Um, based on the comedy of Burt Kreischer. 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 Burt Kreischer. Produced by Burt Kreischer. Leanne Kreischer. Oh, shit. Uh, was Judy Marvel. <laughs> I thought this was the it. director as well, Pete Aten Peter Atencio. And it also stars uh, Burt Kreischer, Mark Hamill, Jimmy Tatro, um, Iva Bapik. Iva Bapik, Jessica Gabor, and uh, Stephanie Kurtzuba. Kurtzuba. If I'm saying that correctly. Um, now, we did also watch this one in IPIC Theaters, Fort Lee, New Jersey. So we'll spare you the review on the theater since we did that last one on About Father. Check that podcast out for About Father. But this one is The Machine. And it's hard to even encapsulate what this movie is. It's uh, equal parts action, comedy, father, son. It's just a lot of elements kind of balled up into one crazy adventure that takes place uh, recounting uh, the times of Burt Kreischer, 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 Burt Kreischer, when he was uh, dubbed the machine in Russia. Um, I'm gonna go in on this. This movie was really, really entertaining. Bert, ah! take off that shirt and show those SOBs who you really are. Now, you gotta party with me. He's the motherfucking machine. What did you think of the uh, main title character, Burt Kreischer? How did he do? What did you think about this guy? He's funny as shit. <laughs> if you're going to watch this movie, um, you can watch it sober or just high and drunk. <laughs> I think uh, when he wrote this, he, he was on some serious weed because <laughs> there was too much shit happening on. And, and this, it was a dark comedy, but it was too much stuff going on. It was funny, though. Well, it's based off his comedy, so... It's based off his comedy, his stand-up, I Am The Machine. Um, you can catch that on Netflix. I, I like Burt. I just found out about Burt probably three years ago. Ran across his, uh, something he was doing on Netflix. Uh, but he's funny. So now watching his stand conduct, his comic, and then watching his movie. Um, if you like Mark Hamill and Star Wars, don't go watch this movie. Um, Mark Hamill is totally different in this movie. He he ruined Luke Skywalker in one, <laughs> <laughs> in one sitting. <laughs> no, I don't think he ruined Luke Skywalker. Oh, he I ruined think Luke he's... Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't Luke. <laughs> I, I don't think you could ruin that. Character. I'm not saying ruin, but this is different. <laughs> right, it definitely is. Uh, um, well, I mean, elaborate a little bit more on Burt because, like, yeah, he is a stand-up comic, and his whole gag when he does his comedy, or at least one of his gags, is he always takes his shirt. He always takes right? his shirt off. That's his. Uh, yeah. That's his thing. Um, and if you to ask him why he do that, he said like, he don't know. So he, <laughs> he just does it. No rhyme or reason. This man's no, just that's his, go bare that's, chest. That's his trademark. You know. Uh, he's happy about the gut. It makes me feel comfortable. He's happy with his keg. He shows it to the world. That's part of his comedy act. That's part of the film as well too. Going shirtless in some of the action scenes and sequences. How do you feel uh, about him being funny in this movie? It's just like he was on stage. <laughs> okay. The same, same, uh, the way you saw him there is the way you see him on stage. Okay, okay. And, and his podcast, and all, it's just, that's him. 
all around. What what type of comedy style does he have? Is, is it like a raunchy comedy style or is it, uh, you know, conservative? He mostly talks about his family, uh, mostly his family, his daughters, his wife, Leanne, uh, and his wife. Yeah, his wife, Leanne, helped produce the movie. But he mostly talks about that and his everyday things that happens in the family and okay. his life. Um, but this is just him. And he told the machine about the story about when he was uh, in a class learning Russian. And his stand up is he didn't know Russian, but the teacher had to get her master's degree in Russian. And she said, You just show up, I'll give you a C. So he was like, All right. So this is where this all stems from. And mm. they robbed the class. <laughs> Right. So, and we'll get to that. You're jumping ahead, but we'll definitely get to that. Yeah, the movie sets itself up as this, you know, this this father that kind of uh, slips up with his comedy act, uh, does some actions that kind of has him on the outs with his daughter. He gets, you know, drunk, has his daughter drive him home, and she gets pulled over and, you know, gets busted for being underage. And there's this fallout. And because of that, he's in a therapy session. He's trying to, you know, uh, mend family fences, so, his, so to speak. With his father. Uh, with his father. And he gets pulled back into this Russian mafia mob world where he's known as the machine. This larger than life legend uh, that's always getting pulled all throughout the, you know, that's the trope of this thing. He, he's the machine. Well, they're looking for the watch that he stole. Exactly. There was a watch that's stolen from this uh, mobster that she needs to get back to give to the father so she can become the heir parent to the, you know, mafia kingdom. And uh, Bert is like that pivotal key character that's going to help that happen. He kind of like goes down memory lane of like what you said. him uh, uh, Fl uh, Flashbacks. Yeah. A lot of flashbacks, but a lot of good integral flashbacks. I think that was actually some of the more interesting points is him flashbacking when he was back in college and, you know, I thought that was casted, you know, pretty decent. You know what I mean? Yeah, they did. The cast was decent. I like the cast. Yeah. Wow. What do you think about the flashback parts in terms of like when he was starting to be dubbed be called the machine and, and all those I scenes? thought it was interesting. It was funny. I don't know who the guy is that played the younger Burt, but he was fucking comical. Yeah, I think his name is uh, Jimmy Tatro. What is it he It seemed playing? like I've seen him somewhere in a couple of movies somewhere, but no, he did. He did real good with him. He took that character of Burt. Being a younger Bert. Jimmy Tatro. That looks like this is probably like one of his more uh, prominent films. He was in Grown Ups as the frat boy Jimmy. He was in uh, 22 Jump Street as Rooster. Uh, you know, he just seemed like he played like a lot of these uh, smaller, but smaller funny roles. parts though. Yeah, 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 yeah funny yeah. parts. Um, but I this seems I like. I want to say he was in a. Oh, man, it was something with Seth Green. With Seth Green? And Mr. Bean and. They had to travel around the world. I, I can't. I digress. I can't remember. Possible, possible. He possible. Was, but but you know he's an actor with a uh, with a pretty extensive filmography. So uh, look him up, Jimmy Chatro. There's a lot of over the top action, and I think we could just just dive into some of that. There's going to be a lot of spoilers, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So you know if you haven't seen the film, <laughs> this is going to help you decide whether this is the type of film you want to see. But one of the more uh, crazy over the top action bits is uh him being on a train and him kind of like uh what was it ivan I, I, igor 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 was like a point person that he needed to connect with but it was the wrong igor and, and there you know a fight ensues and igor gets his neck slit that bert actually punches into the slit of his neck and gets his fist caught trying to pull it out and it's like these are some of the exaggerated action sequences that either yeah, laugh at, scream, you know, squirm at, or just like, what, you know, what the hell's going on? W what did you think of that particular action sequence? I thought it was funny. <laughs> and I think I like that's how it's meant to be. I, th I like the um, over-exaggeration. And I think he does a lot with that on his stand-up, but to put it in the movie, just the fight scenes and everything <laughs> was comical. The fight sequences are, are truly probably the, the funniest gems of this movie. <laughs> um, Bert's acting is uh, it, pretty good, uh, you know, as, yeah, as a you know, comedian who's, you know, playing himself. He still mm -hmm. plays it with an honest portrayal that makes you feel like, OK, this guy's, you know, reliving his past, but is kind of still trying to live up to the hype of, you know, who he once was in college. <laughs> what, do th what do you think about Mark Hamill? I thought he was hilarious. <laughs> I thought he was super funny as the unwavering father of just like, you know what? Show no fear. 
and you know trying to instill this attitude to his son um it really shone through uh in the film for sure there was no use to force luke in this son of a bitch i'm letting you know right now so well you know that's such an iconic role for him that i think he seeks out roles like this where he gets to really have a complete departure of like who he is with with the luke skywalker and the force and the whole star wars mythology that mm. does start to get a little bit um you know overplayed yeah you know you, you start to Tight feel like cast. okay we get it yeah he's typecast he for sure is typecast. He's always going to be Skywalker. He's always going to be the Jedi. But to see him in playing some of these roles where he has a chance to have these different dimensions. I mean, you know, he gets high and he's, you know, messing with Russian strippers. Um, it's it, it really is funny. What about uh, what about this film didn't work for you? Honestly, I can't say nothing didn't work. Okay. I actually like the whole uh, dark comedy of it. Yeah. I, I can't really, I'm thinking, trying to think back. I didn't really see nothing that I didn't like. Actually, I, mean, I didn't see nothing. It's definitely one of those hard, hard R-rated films that you don't see come down the pike too often. Was it rated R? This had to be. Had, had to, to be. be rated R. I mean, <laughs> do they even do ratings anymore in movies? They do. <laughs> yes, they do. Well, what what did you think of um, uh, what's her name, Irina, the the the, the <laughs> Russian? You know, she was my second best character. <laughs> the, this this. She's all hardcore, <laughs> tall and stuff, but she got a sense of humor. Her and Bert got along real good. Just the fact of the whole, oh, my favorite, my, the part where he took, <laughs> he took the uh, piece of wood out of her leg. <laughs> <laughs> set it up though. Set it up for them a little bit. How did that, that part happen? Because I actually well, went to the restroom when I part. And I went oh, when oh, I came back. Okay, I was like, how did so, that even happen? So <laughs> they pushed her off the, um, supposedly shot her off the train. Okay. Her brother. And then Mark Hamill pushed uh, Bert off, tr- supposedly trying to save him, right? So that's when he goes to the village. He's walking through the woods. He goes to the village. And that's when that lady said, we found this whore. <laughs> <laughs> we found this whore in the woods. And it was her. He's like, I forget her name in the woods. You know, Irina, whatever. Irina, yeah. yeah wake up. Uh, <laughs> and they took her inside because they found Igor found him. She was laying on the bed. She had a piece of wood. And of course, Bert just, eh, eh, I'm going to throw up. Next thing you know, he takes the steak out of, <laughs> out of the leg. He's throwing up. Then I think Igor started throwing up. Then she almost started throwing up. Yeah, it, it was a. But uh, just it's a, the, it's a, the film has a lot of gross out moments. And that was kind of like. That was eh. my, that was a gross moment. I didn't want to watch it. I had to watch. Uh, you, know, you don't want to watch what you had to watch. but No, but it was funny. A funny part of that, you know, with the like he's um, Uncle Swag is mentioning is, um, you know, the Irina character gets uh, a wooden, I don't know, wood wood stuck in her, leg. Wood in her a leg, a piece of wood getting paled into her leg, her calf actually, and it has to get pulled out. So much so that Bert throws up, but he throws up in his hand the and stuffs it in his pocket. <laughs> and she's like, why did you throw up in your hand and put it in your pocket? Oh, he was like, just seemed like the best place to put it. <laughs> He's a fucking idiot. It's just like <laughs> it's comedy like that, and the timing and the the comedy uh, the nuanced action of it that was hilarious because I've never seen that before. Oh but that's Bert's it. comedy mind. Yes, he thinks of this. He's stupid. He thinks of stuff like that. In all honesty, it's definitely a film I could see myself watching certain parts over again. Maybe not yeah. the whole entire film it's in its entirety. Certain? Nah. Certain parts, yes. I can not, watch the whole movie. You watch the whole movie again? And it's the type of film that you might have seen back in 88, for whatever reason, I'm feeling yeah, like. I remember. I, yeah, you, you know, know what? like yeah. It, yeah, it has this somewhat dated feel. Police Academy feel. If, I feel like they did it purposely because they talk about um, family matters. Yes. Now, for people that are of a certain age range, you might not know this, but ABC used to have a Friday night lineup called uh it was just tjif yes and family matters lo and behold was one one of its uh you know title films or title shows that played during this lineup why might i ask you because of one role that (laughs) made most people wanting to watch this tv show that role is of urkel by jaleel white yes they made a lot of reference to that movie They, they made a lot of references in this movie Two Family Matters, which was very odd. I was like, hmm. 
So they go to explain the, uh, you know, reference points and this, that, and the third. But um, you know where I'm going with this one. Yeah, go ahead about the dark comedy. You know where I'm going with this one. Okay, so. He doesn't like dark comedy. Big spoiler alert, people. If you haven't seen this film, this is going to be a spoiler that's either going to help you determine whether you want to watch the film or not watch the film or not listen to this part if you haven't seen the film and then come back and watch it. See if you agree with us. But in any event, towards the very tail ends of this movie, um, the Irina character, she is all throughout the film trying to get this watch back to give to her father so she could become the heir of this mafia kingdom. Right. She gets the watch. She gives it to the father, beats out the brother to get it to the father. Right. Minding you, this civil rivalry is, is deadly. I mean, one of them damn near has to die. But um, she gets it back to the father, and the father calls her weak and soft, <laughs> primarily for helping out Bert and stringing him along for the journey. Yep. But the father's like, nah. He ain't having it. You're not getting the keys to the kingdom. So she shoots him, shockingly, turns to Bert, and in Urkel fashion says, did I do that? And I know it was supposed to be a funny moment. Yes, I did laugh, but I laughed at the absurdity of it. I, I did I not that expect was, that to happen. What are your fun. thoughts on it? I thought this shit was funny. <laughs> Why I do you think it was funny? I, it, it goes with the movie. It's a dark comedy. What are you going to do? I don't know. That part bothered me. I can I can go. Not back gonna lie to you, I laugh because it's an obligatory laugh, but it bothered me that they decided to take this very weird, absurd comedy route with Family Matters and Urkel. Dark comedy. Didn't nobody really laugh at that part because you know why? It wasn't really that funny. I guess we fucked. I think up. on paper it, it read funny, and they're like, oh, "Let's go ahead and try this." But uh, we got two black guys to laugh. We're good. <laughs> Well, you know, we get that reference. We get the Urkel reference of the, that I do that. So when she maybe said it was it, younger people and they didn't understand it because her father was broke character hard. to play another character that's hey. like hey, you the silliest you gotta character do. in the world, and you're a Russian mobster. I don't know, dude. You don't know. <laughs> she got a sense. It was hey, it, it could have been Bert shot. Yeah, it it, it could have been Bert that's been shot. Now this movie was budgeted at twenty million dollars. Box office for seven point six. That was for the opening weekend, Memorial Day weekend. So it kind of underperformed. But I think in the uh, grand scheme of things, uh, Little Mermaid probably was going to take the crown that weekend regardless. (laughs) Snatch up any type of box office that was going to happen. So I saw that movie. You know, we'll see what this film continues to do. But as a first weekend showing, mm, very soft. Has a very soft, uh, you know, box office landing. And uh, yes. I don't think it's going to go up from here. It's going to probably go down. But you don't think so? Absolutely. It, 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 it only this made 7.6 million. Do you think this is it? I mean, it'll continue to make more money, but 7.6 is as high as it's going to make. You think it's going to go like straight to Paramount or something like that? HBO? Or? Um, well, let's 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 take a look to see. It's It was distributed by Sony Pictures uh, through Screen Gems. Uh, so. Production companies was Legendary Pictures. Um, you know... I, I could see it being on, on the streamers in uh yeah in another by by middle summer. Middle summer, okay. But we we shall see. It's got a runtime of of uh, 112 minutes. Um, didn't feel necessarily too long or too short. I think I think that he's he's gonna wind up doing some more movies. I actually like the movie. I'm not gonna lie. I think more of his fans go see the movie. They'll probably get some more. They probably go up a little bit. Well, here's the thing. I think this movie was a vehicle for his fans right. entirely. I, I, was, I think if you don't game. know who this guy is, you're not really watching the movie. And That's I think same. if you saw the trailer and you're like, okay, maybe I'll give this movie a That's shot. The same you as probably Seba- didn't That's like the same it as Sebastian, you yeah. Yeah. Uh, stand ups doing there. You don't see a lot of stand ups doing movies anymore. There's a lot of crossover. So I right. think I think nowadays uh you're not just doing stand-up, you're doing stand-up, you're doing movies, uh, movies you're doing podcasts. podcasts. He has a podcast as well, too. Yes. Uh, um, yes. What's the name of his podcast? I'm two Bears sure. in a Cave. It's, what is it? Two Bears in a Cave. Two two Bears in a Cave. He's got so, a, his buddy is actually pretty fucking funny. Now, right. So what would you rate the movie? You answer that, and I'll base my answer off of yours. I give it two and a half. Two and a half bags of popcorn. Now, you said you liked this movie. Why are you giving it such a low rating? Two and a half bags. I don't know. I was looking for more. I think I'm going to go a notch lower than you and give it two bags of popcorn. Damn. You can't get half a bag. But here's the thing. Over the top action, gratuitous violence, violence that just was like just absurd. You know, it just, you know, <laughs> absurd. 
come on, man. You're punching the guy in the through a slit, you know, <laughs> through his throat. I, the action scenes were good. He gets he gets beheaded. I mean, it it is what it is. You know, he got beheaded out the train. I mean, it is what it is. It's it's, um, it's very over the top. It's very gross. I mean, you know. I think that's what they wanted to be over the top. Well, you know, listen. If this was, at, we watched, we did a double feature. But if this was a movie I watched and I was eating a cheeseburger, I, you know, you might have been off. gross. You've been done. Well, you know, I'm eating a cheeseburger. He's vomiting. I'm eating a cheeseburger. Someone's yeah. getting, you know, the peg, you know. So true. You mm-hmm. can only drink through this movie. You can't eat anything for, for this movie. So it's like, that's why I told you the beginning. You gotta it's, be the, it's, it's a gross out, but it doesn't bill itself as that. You, you gotta know? be the high or something to watch this movie. <laughs> <laughs> so so right. And so it's it's um. It's a great stoner flick. It's a great That's film right, if you that. want to drink and just have fun. If you know, if you there got you like go. a um, a cut up buddy, you know, someone that just like wants to watch, you know, campy schlock. Um, schlock. I do feel like this is a film that will probably be remembered uh, y- years to come for, for for taking some of those bold chances and and, I, I and, and daring he's... action. It, it was good. It was it was very entertaining, very gross. It was fun. Don't see myself watching it anytime soon. Uh, um. But yeah, that is The Machine, a 2023 film, action comedy, directed by Peter Atencio. So with that, I want to let you guys know to go ahead and subscribe to our podcast at YouTube. You can do this at Midnight Magic Media. You can subscribe to us on YouTube. We have a lot of uh, premium content on that channel. Also, follow us on Instagram at Midnight Magic Media. And you can also follow us on Facebook at Midnight Magic Media as well. Check out our podcast. Check out our um, blogs. Check out all the content that we got going on. Subscribe. Check us out. We have more to come. So that's it for Film Frenzy for this one. I am Jay Masai. Michael Swag. And we out. <laughs>